Hi, Casey. Thanks for having us out here at Happy Day Farms. Definitely. It's really it's a beautiful be day. We are going to be talking about best management practices uh, for watershed health for cannabis farms and the small rural gardeners. And um, so we're going to be going through and talking about natural resources yep. and uh, how we can conserve and protect and restore the natural processes uh, in the landscape. That, I think, is one of the things that's important about best management practices. It's, it's, these are things that are good for the land, good for the people, good for the bottom line. And so if you're following these practices, you're gonna be less wasteful, you're gonna have more money coming in because you're utilizing the resources to the best of the abilities. You know, and I think it's, it's really important, this conversation around best management practices, you know, this sort of collective dialogue around like what are the most helpful ways to, to participate in the ecology of the farm and have a thriving both ecosystem and viable farming operation and I think the Resource Conservation District work on the, this, this booklet has been phenomenal. It really opened the conversation and, and provided kind of a roadmap. and so you can get a copy of the booklet, you can find it online, you can download it, that um, we have hard copies available from the Resource Conservation District and it, it really does provide you know a, a reference guide, a roadmap, a way to like look at your practices and it's not about, you know, it's not about like, oh, I, it, it's about trying to figure out how do I do things better on my farm? How do I access the collective wisdom to be able to um, engage in an, in an agriculture that is more ecologically sound? Best management practices around water, minimizing your use. So drip irrigation, mulch, flow meters, monitoring, paying attention and making sure that you're watching your garden so you're monitoring your water use. So tell us about your water system and how you manage water for best management practices. So we have a rainwater collection pond that's at the bottom of the property. Um, there are submersible pumps mounted in the pond that are direct drive from the solar panels. So no fossil fuels in the water distribution system. Uh, the pumps, pumps in the pond push to tanks up on high and then gravity feed back down and then we use uh, solar powered timers to, to run the crop so that we're um, irrigating through drip irrigation, um, managing the water. We run a water meter to make sure, um, A, we can see how much water we're using each day. If there's a problem, if there's a leak, you see a jump in the, in the amount of the, the volume of water that went through. So we're tracking our usage and we are minimizing as much as possible while still trying to, to maintain maximum crop health and vitality. And so it's always kind of a balance, um, you know, especially up here on the ridge line, a lot of very dry, desiccating breezes, very hot, no dew in the, in the evenings, no, you know, humidity does not rise much at night, so it's a very, very dry environment. And so we use a lot of water, and, and we really want to make sure to um, target that water exactly where we want it to be. Use a lot of mulch so that the drip is underneath the mulch, so you're conserving that moisture, not having it evaporate either from the sun or from the wind. BMP is around erosion. You want to slow water down anywhere that it's concentrating. You want to make sure that you're clearing the sediment out of it. You want to make sure that soil is not leaving your property and it's staying where you want it to be. Lots of mulch, lots of cover crop, lots of making sure that the water is filtered before it enters the streams. So the Mendocino County Resource Conservation District, along with Pacific Watershed Associates, has a great resource. It's the handbook uh, for forest, ranch, and rural roads. And this is the Bible, really, the for answer. all landowners to uh, learn more about uh, progressive road design and storm-proofing their roads. Yep. And, and I think that's exactly the, the articulation of best management practices in which designing your road and maintaining your road in, in a way that follows these best management practices is going to save you money because you're not going to be buying more gravel, you're not going to be having to redo the road. And so it's this idea of, of accenting the way we do things so that we're not wasting money, we're not wasting resources, and we're having a strong and healthy ecology around us. BMPs around soil health building living soil, always compost, nutrients, making sure that you're keeping the soil covered, that you're growing lots of different crops, maintaining biodiversity, lots of cover crops, making sure that you're sopping up leftover nutrients so they're not entering the environment in the winter. These are our cannabis terraces, and so we've, we've harvested the plants, we've cut the stumps down, we left the, the, the stumps in to break down over the winter, that way we don't disturb the soil profile. You can kind of see a difference between these different terraces in which this one over here has a lot more straw and a lot more bare spaces. 
the cover crop has been sown in there and it'll grow up through that mulch and create a nice green um, cover crop layer that'll, that'll, keep, that'll prevent erosion and soak up any leftover nutrients. BMPs around fertilizers and pest control, you want integrated pest management. Broad biodiversity, you want strong healthy crops, you want to cull weak plants so that you avoid infestations. When you have infestations, you want to start at the lowest level possible use of uh, pesticides so that you're maintaining a healthy and productive environment without utilizing heavy pesticides. We don't want poisons in our products. Pesticides are things that by definition are agricultural chemicals used specifically in agriculture. So you know, treat it professionally. Don't leave them sitting out. Don't have them in unmarked bottles. Um, focus on plant health. You know, pesticides should always be a last resort. Have a integrated pest management and IPM program so that you're minimizing your pest problems. There are things that can be used that are more benign and there are things that can be used that are more detrimental and, and heavier poisons. And so I think always starting at the lowest end that you possibly can and staying there rather than moving towards some of these heavy duty pesticides. And, and in cannabis cultivation, most of that is not allowed. And which, you know, A, it's not allowed, so don't do it. But B, I think it's a really important and powerful example for the rest of agriculture. Like actually poisons on food are not cool. And so trying to figure out how to change this conversation about how we grow things and and you know as a farmer I have pests you know those you, you end up you know this year was the classic aphids was the big thing and so I think a monocrop cannabis farm is as unsustainable as a monocrop corn wheat or soybean farm I think that nature creates biodiversity for a reason and that as farmers we need to be building that into our plan BMPs around solid and human waste is you want to make sure that it's not interacting with the environment in a way that it can contaminate it. So you never want human waste exposed to groundwater. So you either you need to have a permitted septic and if you have a composting toilet you want it to be contained so that there is no opportunity for the human waste to interact with the environment. Solid waste, you know, trash, plastic, glass, etc. It's the old reduce, reuse, recycle. You want to make sure to get as much use out of your resources as possible. So in general, Try to maintain as much of a clean site as possible and you know, keep your resource piles contained and, and when it's trash, take it to the dump.